Hi, this is Bernie with Connections Consulting here in Strathmore in the greater Calgary area in our secret training room that we won't tell you about until we meet you here in person someday, soon, hopefully. Right now, I'm uh, going to present to you exploring the customer service training area or course. And it's a one day, six hour seminar that we have. It's actually two days when combined with our sales management or our leadership and management of staff course. And, I, and that's the way I always promote it is combined because I believe in fact that uh, customer service training is your basic foundation for both other elements of you're building your business, uh, you know, the sales management and leadership and management of staff. And I guess if you haven't figured that out yet by my videos um, introducing my training courses and company, um, then you haven't figured out me or what I'm doing. <laughs> but it's, it's pretty much the uh, essence or essential component of everything we do and believe in customer service training and it is uh, you know it's it's something that everybody should have in your entire organization from the CEO right down to the littlest worker on the floor serving up the chicken plate at the customer service desk if you want to call it that at original Joe's in the restaurant floor or wherever grocery store shelf product Sobeys drugstore, London Drugs, all that. So um, everybody can benefit from it. And it's something you take the components or the ethics uh, of it, the stewardship uh, components of it, and you take it into your other courses and training that you explore and go into to learn about stuff, to apply into your own job, and then make decisions uh, what you want to do with it in your life and your skill base. So today again we're talking about your work and your skill and I'm Bernie May as I said with Connections Consulting and we are all about building professional customer service into people, into businesses and organizations and we work in the area of market growth projects like business process improvement and sales call um, ability going out and doing a project for a customer with a sales agent on hands on ground going getting the customers getting the business on the books and we work in the area of three training courses that I mentioned customer service training sales management leadership and management of staff so that's what we're up to and our goal is to meet our customers' success needs. So we initially sit down and do a consultation and figure out what it is they want exactly so we can help them the best we can. And I'm going to be talking to you today for about 20 minutes or so as a basic introduction to our customer service training component, which I feel is so important and key to your overall business success. Without these fundamentals, you're lost, really, like a ship at sea, lost without a rudder. And people don't always know what to do, so they make choices on the job. And if they got good processes to follow, that's one thing. But sometimes things happen in work and business, and, and you don't always know what to do. And, you know, today we're going to be covering um, the three components of the course, area, approach, and appearance and I'll touch on a little bit of them as we talk here but this is no by no means the full course but what I want to say is you know people get lost in their decision making without process and even when sometimes when there is good process scenarios pop up where you don't know what to do and you got to handle it somehow so if you have the ethical the ethics components of this type of teaching your people or you as an individual are more apt to make good and better decisions on the job when you know things fly at you sometimes you don't know what's 
Now nah, they're right. It's like, okay, I've never had this before. The boss isn't here right now. I got to do something. What do I do? I, you know, I, I was just thinking, remembering a story as I was talking to you here. I worked in a grocery store at Sobeys years ago as a night manager when I was going to school and uh, getting my, in, in my middle career, getting a, a degree in, uh, in, in human resources. And anyways, uh, in the grocery store, there was me as an adult and a lot of teenagers, and we were kind of the late afternoon, evening shift when all the adults running the departments in the store went home at five-ish. You know, we were there for the evening till close. And uh, so I, I got a phone call one night, and I'm the only adult there. And uh, a guy from, I was living in Red Deer, a guy from Calgary phoned and said that his MasterCard had been abused that day, and somebody had rung up $1,600 worth of groceries in my store um, from his card. Somehow they had gotten the number. And the funny thing was, just as I was answering the phone, I looked over my shoulder by the front tills, and there was these three kind of shady looking people walking out of the store with four big carts of groceries. And I thought, well, I wonder if that was so instant that he got the call from MasterCard right away. So I called over one of my younger assistants that was there, and I said, uh, just stall those people right now, and just make up some reason, you know, why that they need to talk to me about something. And uh, so I got on the phone with the police and just went on a total hunch that this was all going down as we spoke. And sure enough, it was them. There was a crack cocaine ring, and they were stealing groceries, and they were peddling them off to people in their drug ring, in their, well, not a cartel in Canada. It was the abusers, I guess, the people who were sick and poor and downtrodden and had no money. They were spending it all on drugs, and so they were selling them cheap groceries that they were stealing. And they'd actually hit, we were about the eighth or ninth store in about a, 10 day period all around central Alberta. So the police sent out a runner and cuffed one guy right to the bar by the till, like the railing. And then he chased the other two guys, but they ended up apprehending them. But I mean, that wasn't in a process manual. And Sobeys and most other grocery or any kind of store, they, all, they usually just say for safety protection of employees, just let people go. Like the money, just take the money and run. But Anyhow, that's how I reacted and handled it, and nobody got hurt, and it was handled in a safe way using the police, our authorities, and so it went good. But, you know, there's quick thinking. Uh, another story comes to mind, and, uh, you know, like, you, you just don't know. Like, I was a customer in this scenario. This was years ago in Saskatoon, and I went in to get my car washed, my very first company car. And, and you know, in my early 30s, I guess. And I was on Idlewild Drive up in the north end of the city, and I went into this car wash, and I left work to go wash my car because I was probably calling on somebody later that day and wanted it to look good. And it was sort of my coffee break time of day, and I was, I called my broker because I was trading in the stock market a bit then, and the shares had went up quite a bit, and they were starting to go down, so I wanted to sell some. So I got on my phone just before I pulled in the car wash, and you know how it is when you're talking on your phone, and back then you could drive legally and talk on your phone before they realized all these accidents were just like impaired driving. So I was driving into the car wash talking on my phone, not paying attention, I'd already put my money in. And it was one of those ones, you know what, the big beater cloth things that go around on your car? And, uh, you know, at gas station, the attendants inside running the confectionery and the gas pump side, nobody's paying attention to me. But I kind of saw somebody was there faintly through a foggy window. They weren't really running it hands-on. I, you know, it was a ways away. I saw them. So I go in, and the beaters start beating, and the soap and foam's coming over my car, and it's getting dark, and I'm disappearing in 
outside the darkness of the fog of it all, talking on my phone. All of a sudden, there's this big boom. And my car jumped off the railing somehow. Nothing to do with me. It was a default in the machine. And I was jammed, and the guy behind me, because they space them out, you know how the guy's coming behind you 10 feet, and you're going through together? Well, all of a sudden, he's going under my car, and the back end of my car's lifting up, and he's punching into my car because his track is still pushing him ahead. Well, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I'm not running a car wash. I'm in my car, right? I'm a customer. So I had a quick thought. I just hopped on it. I hit the horn on my car and just started honking it because I was under the water and the soap and the beaters were beating and this car was beating on me from behind and I couldn't go anywhere. I was like T-boning on an angle. And there was like $1,500 damage or something, but... Uh, Anyways, kind of shocked me, but I, as soon as I honked the horn, the attendant come running out. Well, I'm sure if they had that in a process manual, <laughs> I don't know, but he had to think quick, right? Anyhow, he shut the whole thing down and got me out of there, and and uh, he's kind of stunned. He, you know, he might have apologized, but it didn't seem very clear. But then I got the insurance of the guy behind me in the car. And anyhow, so he had to think quick, and you know, like his boss wasn't there, he's just a younger guy, you know, in his 20s or whatever. But you know, that's that's how it goes, it's uh, not everything is clear, and you got to learn how to think quick on your feet. And if you have good ethics training and good, you know, gut instinct, this you uh, you kind of know what to do based on what you've done and how you live it, you feel more sure, right? So this kind of training helps with you feeling more sure and the confidence level goes up when hard decisions happen. And it's not to say anybody's gonna rob your store, but you never know nowadays, like crime is up 40% in rural Canada alone, you know, in Alberta and stuff in the rural areas compared to even the cities. So people are hard up and are done by and and have given reproach to things like this so you gotta know what to do and if you know if you if you're not sure you ask your boss to tell you he'll tell you as much as you can and then you make decisions you know based on what you know but there are sometimes gut instinct things you know you gotta go from there and know about and decide on but so that's kind of just you know that part of the training the ethical and decision making but we really focus on these three components area approach and appearance and you know we they're also kind of nicknamed the look the touch and the feel it's really about customer experience the the customer comes in he wants to enjoy his experience and get what he needs he or she and you're there as the service worker the manager to uh to, to, you know, lend that to them, really, give that to them for pay. And, uh, you know, it's customer relations, but uh, they're kind of keying in on your whole overall thing, right, your area. You know, we go through kind of a protocol checklist, and, I, you know, I'm sure you might have one at work. Some businesses are very good at it. they got a checklist. I've even seen them hanging on the wall. You know, but like in Starbucks, for example, you see their checklist, everything they got to do. And I know different places I go, same thing. And uh, original Joe's, even the the bar at uh, the King Eddie or the station here in town, they all have certain things they got to do. So, you know, if they've been training that, but we help kind of go through it and discern where you can improve it. And, uh, and it's a teamwork concept too, you know, so... Um, we have during our training, and this is an intro to it, um, in that part of a day, um, there's teaching. So I'll go through each component in detail, talk through it, re-talk it. Um, even if you're experienced, it's good to refresh, you know, like go to training once a year or so and, and get refreshed in the information and the thinking and the way to do things. 
So we do that, we teach, and then we have a uh, demonstration video that gives some live examples. And this is really good for the younger kind of rookies that are new, is you see scenarios and how problems come up and how people handle them. And just even a good gesture or a nod. Like uh, I've seen people in stores and different things, they're so good at it, they do it in their sleep almost, they're not even thinking. But you come in the store and they're busy with a customer. Well, the last thing they want to do is have you lose you and have you walk out because they're busy. And and so they just they'll nod at you or they'll give you eye contact so that you know that, that they recognize you and they saw that you're there. And so they're not ignoring you. You know you felt uh, contact or connected just by their look and sort of nod. Um, and then you wait around, right? Um, the, that's the idea, is to kind of uh, acknowledge the person. So we go through some of that in uh, human gestures, how you can approach people and make them feel well, like they belong there and they want to be there because they're next, you're, you're waiting on them next, and they get a feeling and a sense of that. And I mean, let's face it, your hands are full. You, can't, you can only do so much, maybe your other your boss is on a coffee break or had to go handle something else or whatever and vice versa so um, it works that way so we go through uh, we have the demonstration video that uh, shows you some live insight and then your teams uh, break up into table groups and talk through like real life scenarios what they're facing at work sometimes I find like through the course of life people are frustrated at their co-workers and they don't even know it, eh? Like, I mean, they don't know it about each other. They sense some tension, but it's because people aren't talking through the issues of uh, customer service and constraints. One person is in their area assigned to them. Another person is quite busy and has their hands full, and there's kind of no mechanism in place for covering each other off. And so they're each doing their responsibility, but one person is overwhelmed and the next person is kind of short of work, but they've got their area covered. So, you know, like sometimes absent leaders, this kind of stuff happens. And, uh, you know, um, they won't always figure it out with the teammates. Some uh, good teams some and mature people sometimes talk about it other times. And then sometimes you get obstinate people that don't want to, they just want to do their thing. And uh, and that's it, and and you know then it's hard to get along. So we help uh, through table discussion as a component of our course. Um, you know, people to talk out some of the issues. So you go back to work at the end of the six-hour day. In this particular day, if it's part of the second day of the other two courses, sales management or leadership and management of staff or whether it's just by itself you go home with a plan for your team so then you get working well and sometimes it takes an outside consultant to come talk to you and even get through barriers that people are up against that their own leaders sometimes don't get through and i've seen that and uh, an outside face and voice and help give feedback and help question and facilitate talk but uh you know, it's not always like that, but it works and it helps. And another thing we have, uh, you know, our courses are uh, certified. So, um, you know, you earn uh, training units. And uh, at the end of our courses, you can become a graduate of the Connections Consulting Training Institute. And we've got four different... Uh, management categories here sales leader certification management leader certification a customer service leader certification and then we have a purpose course as well you can kind of define your purpose in life why you're here on this planet so you don't feel so blue about it all the time you can recognize your own skill and quality and that's what we're talking today about helping you train in your skill of customer service so we give you a nice plaque and it's signed by me with a gold seal on it and your name and when you graduated from a particular course 
and the title of the course and you're now a leader in that area and you take it home and you can hang it at home in your home office or uh, take it to work if you've got a designated area in the kitchen by the restaurant where you can hang it on your part of the wall or corner of the wall and see it and it kind of or, or in your own office or whatever but it it kind of glares at you and reminds you you did well you learned some key quality things and the, there's like a manual notebook you take home like a little uh, um, what do you call those things anyway it's like your brochure manual so if you want to look something up and refer back to some things you learned in the class you can do that and it's it's good it's uh, recognition we boast a 23 percent gain in workability of any work no matter what you're doing um, whether it's sales or in this case some customer service just uh, your ability to deal with people you'll recognize a boost in your in your confidence and although some things are challenging to measure we know and we've seen people come up in confidence and uh, just ability and output of uh, quality of work overall management of things and their work and uh, just dealing with customers and relational issues and things that issues that come up in the customer scenario and uh, we have a guarantee so um, you know we don't give you your money back but what we do is is we'll bring you back to the training if, if you don't feel your employee or you um, have qualified to the point where you've gained we'll bring you back and put you through the training free of charge the, the next go around probably the next budget year but we could have you come right back in a month if you wanted to so um, we do that and we just you know we have a few conditions in our guarantee we want to make sure the person is not a problematic employee so we want to go through with you the leader of your business uh, their performance reviews in the past number of years but uh, anybody that's got the right attitude is going to excel because we've done it and uh, and adhere by it our entire life here it works um, you know customers are not uh, you're not a machine and they're also not a hassle they're not a problematic hassle they're to be valued and uh, you couldn't live without them I mean, where's your profit coming from if you don't have a customer right and it would be just kind of boring I mean the less people there are around um, but I do speak about customer issues and scenarios and philosophies on my Facebook and uh, you know social media so I uh, I enjoy that it's who I am part of who I am and how I'm made up to do this stuff so I enjoy it and I enjoy having you follow me got a lot of people linked on there now but keep joining me anybody that hears this message feel free to join and uh, you know we'd uh, love to have you there I've uh, covered off some of the scenarios handshake <laughs> eye contact you know like uh, I think if you are handshaking someone there's scenarios where you don't want to like it's not always professional like are you a pro that's the question we want to make you a pro but if you enjoy a job scenario that doesn't require a handshake it feels very formal or out of place if someone tries to shake your hand in some scenarios so you know don't don't go over the top either that's kind of the point here um, I got yelled at once or twice where you walk into a store and they're like yelling at you hello from the back of the store counter and you're just barely walking in the door kind of getting oriented and getting your focus so uh, don't go over the top either kind of gauge it and you know do set the mood but uh, kind of play the vibe of it and see where things are at and just try to blend in in a comfort zone too like you don't when your store is a nice comfortable atmosphere and people are relaxed and enjoying yourself you hate it when a group comes in that's all stressed and pumped out and they're pushing and it's like it kind of wrecks almost everybody else's experience so uh you know you hate it on the reverse when you're the customer and you're in that relaxed mode and the store clerk is 
blasted at you because they don't they're not sensing where people are at so try to get tuned in with your intuitiveness and that's good i'm on twitter and i have a file called or a, a theme called uh, on the no in the go so if you want to follow that i'll give things like canadian dollar quotes um i talk about the markets just interesting background information Scenarios. I'm quite in depth with business. I've got uh, my whole life in it, experience pretty much. And uh, I do have the equivalent of a master's in business administration when you combine my HR theology degree with a bunch of high level business courses I took through the American uh, Management Association, the Canadian Institute of it. And some high-level ones. I have a high-level accounting course, uh, the Fundamentals of Finance and Accounting. A lot of these were like $5,000 courses per week. And, uh, you know, paid a lot to go to them, full-time staff, employee. For I benefited from working for other people through my career. I didn't do like a lot of people did and got a degree right out of high school. I felt like I floundered, so I went off to explore the world and find out more about what interested me and follow my path or my journey, right? And I did it that way, and it's good. And I I enjoy that, enjoyed that, and, you know, I recommend that for anybody that doesn't uh, fit the cog in the wheel scenario and it's not adding up. I didn't want to waste a bunch of time and my parents' money taking a bunch of arts and science classes that didn't seem to be leading me anywhere right out of grade 12. So this is how I did it. And, this is a good course. Um, I might be hiring an accountant soon. Is my government loan that uh, got approved? The money's going to be here before too long, I guess. I'm, there's a bit of a delay. I'm getting that figured out. But uh, as soon as that's here, I'm going to be hiring staff, and one person will be an accountant. And the, you know, my scenario in life is you don't always have to have the degree or the namesake behind it, but if you've got the quality or the skill and the ability to work in certain things, like you're good at math and you understand concepts, I can train you in all the right accounting and legal procedures, and we'll do that. Well, we're going to put our own people through good training too, because we believe in it. We're out training you and selling to our customer training concepts. Well, we're, gonna, we're not going to be like the dentist with no teeth, okay? We're going to take care of our people and spend a lot of money on training and... Uh, what else do I have to talk about here? Um, you know, people like you. That's why they deal with you. I mean, they like your store, your setup. They're attracted to it. There's an appeal. They, and, you know, I mean, there's some scenarios you almost grudgingly have to deal somewhere, but there's enough competition nowadays. Not really anybody's stuck. So, you know, we're not really a faceless crowd. The people who serve you well are known, and I get pretty good service wherever I go. I'm pretty happy. Like, uh, you know, there's a lot of places that aren't so good, and I know that. People say to me, like, there is no more customer service. They've been saying that to me for 10 years. It's just all cheap price, and to some degree, that's true. You know, my aim is to make it better wherever I go, and uh, you can get known if you stand, even if you're not... I mean, nobody's, none of us are perfect, right? So you know, if you're not doing too bad, you might be doing, you know, that one notch better than the neighbor competitor, right? So you put in that little effort and you try, you get known. People like you. Next thing you know, geez, my restaurant's so full. We can hardly keep up. We got to hire staff. We got to, well, we got to line up. How do we, these people are lingering and we got to get them out of the table because our store is full and there's a lineup. Well, what do we do? Let's offer them a dessert special so they finish up and we can get the lineup in. You know, give them a, give them a price discount on dessert. Or you'll start to have these problems. Like, the next thing you know, it's your marketing isn't the problem. It's your operation side. So, so we want to help you cause operational problems because you got too much business. That's really our goal. And... Uh, You know, keep your customers coming back, the loyalty, and finishing it well. Um, you know, one of my favorite movies of all time, Gene Hackman is in it. It's called The Hoosiers. 
and it's a it's a basketball movie, and uh, Gene Hackman is like the Tom Cruise of 20 years ago kind of guy. They don't look the same, but that was his flamboyant style, and he kind of led the edge in Hollywood, had a lot of the big name movies, but this is one that might go back a ways. The Hoosiers, small town Indiana basketball team, and uh, they go to their state final in this big city, right? And he played like we did in my small town. He just took whatever he got. The team barely had a team, lackluster talent of sorts, but he made it work. And so he got them to the big state final in the big city, you know, and they went from their couple hundred uh, court seating fans to 15,000 people or something. And I remember this part of the movie where he had his team out on the court the night before, and you got to prepare, right? In customer service, you got to prepare and think ahead what you're going to do. He got his team out in the court, and the, he had the captain go stand over by the hoop and one of the other players, and he reached into his, he pulled out a tape measure out of his pocket, and he threw it over at the captain, and he said, measure the distance from the hoop to the floor. And he measured it and said the measurement. And he, and he said, oh, yeah, same as ours back home, eh? And then he says, okay, measure from the hoop to the top of the key where the free throw line is. And they measured it. And he told them the measurement. Oh, same as ours back home, eh? Well, he said, you know, guys, don't worry about the crowd. It's a, you know, we're in the big city here, but the court's the same, isn't it? And the fundamentals, and that's the point, the fundamentals of customer service are the same no matter what you're doing. You might be running a huge corporation with 500 stores around the world, or you might have one little daddy-do, mom-and-pop kind of shop right here at home. But the fundamentals are the same, how you enjoy your day, how you be with people, how you get along, how you do the right thing, whether someone's watching you or not, the boss, whatever, to get the product to the person that needs it and serve them well. And that's what we're all about. Client expectation is there. I mean, to some degree, there's lacklusterness. They don't care as much some days, but they do expect something for the price is right. And they'll do well with you. And most people, you know, and if they don't, well, then you got a problem to solve, and we teach that in some of our other courses. Anyways, Bernie May, I'm going to go now, Connections Consulting Incorporated, and we're uh, overrun this part of the video by 10 minutes, so we got a longer talk than I thought. But anyhow, we got a new look coming, so you take care, and we'll see you in the marketplace, and we'll see you soon.